Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's for me to talk about the statistical problem solving. And uh, conventional wisdom has it. <coughs> More maths is good for everybody. Um, and statistics is important. But actually, in designing this course, we've tried to unpick these things a bit. Yes, but what maths is it that is going to be good for everybody? And what statistics? And one of the things that I, um, I find very encouraging about this course is that actually we have asked those questions and we've gone back to sources and to research and to what other people have said um, outside the world of maths teaching. And we've looked um, at, a, at um, all sorts of reports, as Stella said, uh, listed some of them that are, uh, we've taken notice of. For a long time, I was chief executive of MEI, and when I retired from that, I almost immediately went straight into um, doing two reports for the Royal Statistical Society. The first of these was the one on the left, the future of statistics in our schools and colleges, which started off as really an audit of what statistics was being taught at the time. This was 2011, that sort of time. Um, but the report grew a bit, and it ended up with a big table covering 17 subjects at GCSE that was saying what were their, an outline of the statistics in their specifications, but also what are the statistics opportunities there. And that was the final closing thing in that report. But that left a question open as to, well, we've looked at opportunities in GCSE, what about opportunities in A-level? And that was the birth of the second report, um, The World Full of Data, which was doing a similar job of looking at opportunities in different A-level subjects. And I would say right from the start, although that is talking about A-level, it's actually relevant to almost anything post-16, be it vocational or academic, whether it's A-level or hires or whatever. And that work was <coughs> for the Royal Statistical Society and funded by the actuaries, and so that's why I've put their two logos on that slide. Now, <coughs> for the world full of data, the research question that was asked was, um, st statistics is now extensively used in HE and in employment. What teaching opportunities does this present for A-levels? Um, in relevant subjects, and that meant in subjects other than maths. And to do that, I had the immense privilege of engaging seriously with 10 subject communities. And I'm not sure that anyone else has, anyone has had that, that opportunity. And the 10 subjects, you can see them there, biology, business studies, chemistry, computing, economics, geography, history, physics, psychology, sociology. And we had meetings and then ongoing discussions with a broad range of people representing those subjects, and very meaningful discussions they were. Now, all of that, to summarize the outcomes of that, it, there were two key summary statements. The first was that students need to be confident and competent in working with data. And the second is that they need to be able to use statistics to support investi investigational work. And that is particularly true in those subjects where there is natural variability within the material of the subject. And that's subjects like geography, biology, psychology, business studies. I'd pick those out as subjects where the, the second point is particularly so. Now, this report was virtually, was hardly out, and work was 
undergoing was getting going on what was going to happen with core maths. And so the insights that came from that report actually went straight into the core maths, and in particular, the statistical problem solving, which is designed to meet, specifically designed to meet those needs. And so, you know, this syllabus is really designed on what was a very extensive piece of research, a, a big piece of work there. Now, um, starting with the first of those about working with data, the <clears throat> um, overall, there was an overall statement there. Um, across all subjects, this is quoting out of the report, Across all subjects, there was a strong agreement that those in higher ed, from those in higher education, that new undergraduates would benefit from being sufficiently familiar with data that they can engage with new data sets as and when they meet them. This would mean that before arriving at university, students should have done work that gave them a basic a set of basic skills. And what did those? What were those skills? Well, we. Asked, uh, we got a statement out of every subject and then compiled them into an, over, an overarching statement. But what we've got here are some of the things that HE was saying. And I picked out four in particular here because these are things that students won't naturally get. Uh, they certainly won't get them out of GCSE maths, probably not out of A-level maths. Um, being aware of the source of a data and the method of its collection. Understanding the different types of variable and related measurement techniques. Understanding about natural variability and experimental error and the differences between them. And framing suitable questions to ask when using data to investigate a situation. Now, you can think all of those are common sense, but they're not actually things that get done in GCSE maths and so far haven't got done very much in A-level maths either. So there's a, a deficit there that where are students going to get those skills? Um, the other half of this, the statistic cycle, and this is when particularly relevant when students are doing their own investigative work and in most in, I think in all subjects, uh, students do more or less of investigative work. Um, I've put this as the statistic cycle, but actually it could be a cycle um, in virtually any subject you like, because they all have a, an investigative cycle. Starting with a problem, analysing it, deciding how you're going to go about it, what information, what data you need, then collecting the data, then presenting it uh, either visually or using summary measures, and that may be sufficient to solve your problem, that's the dotted line up the top, or it may be that you need some more mathematical analysis, which is the data analysis on the left. And that process is you know, it's integral for geography field work, for biology coursework, for psychology, these are it's, that's an essential of what, how the students are going to interact with their um, with them statistics and with their subject. Now, then moving on, where are students going to learn this statistics? I already pointed out on the um, skills slide that there are things that they wouldn't easily learn in maths. Well, the opportunities that are there, um, is it A-level maths, in GCSE maths, within their A-level subject, and there was some talk about that um, in an earlier session this morning, or is it through core maths? Well, taking the first two of these together, um, a-level maths is a bit of a non-starter because most people don't do it. So, you know, you can't rely on your psychology student 
learning their statistics for A-level maths because uh, most of them don't do it. So then moving on to within so students' A-level subjects. And you know, it's undoubtedly the case that students do learn some statistics within the A-level different subjects. But, and this is a very big but, the focus of psychology is on psychology. The focus of geography is on geography. Um, and that's the way it should be, and not on statistics. The purpose of those subjects is to learn their subjects. It's not to learn stats. The stats should just be a tool that they're able to use just as they can use reading and writing or whatever. It should be something that they just have to hand. Um, and in order to achieve that, statistics is the support's going to be needed from somewhere else. That's where the core maths and particularly the statistical problem solving comes in. That's the support that can be provided. Um, now, as I already said, there are sort of two prongs. One is the da working with data and the other is the investigational work. <laughs> working with data, um, one aim of the statistical problem solving um, to help students be confident and competent with data. And to do that, we're giving out a large data set at the start of the course. Now, we'd actually worked a lot about, done a lot of investigate, a lot of thought into pre-release data. And to start with, uh, this we being MEI, and um, we'd thought of pre-release data in the ways that, way that it's normally thought of as being exam material. Something you give out maybe a week, maybe three weeks, or whatever before the exam. Um, and that's the way pre-release material is being used um, for instance, in the quantitative reasoning. But here, this is something quite different. This is being used as teaching material. And that's an absolute change in the way that pre-release material is being seen. And it's a fundamental, it's something deeply fundamental to this course. Um, it's not, but it's not that surprising. It's just like a set book in English literature where you give out a set book. You're teaching skills of English literature, but you're using a set book to convey them. So um, that's, um, that is fundamental to this. And then 50% of the final exam will be based on the pre-release material. And it will come to you on a spreadsheet, or it will come to you electronically. And the intention is that working with it in the course of the, during this course because it's electronically there, then students will work with it electronically. It will be too big a set to do, do, do manually. That's not the reality of statistics. Um, so you expect to be able to use either a spreadsheet or a statistics package or whatever in the course of teach, uh, your teaching in the course of um, during lessons in students' learning. Now, the specimen pre-release material, it's um, data drawn from the CIA fact book. And we've chosen for every country in the world the location, the birth rate, the life expectancy, um, the population, and the per capita GDP. And that's for 200 and something countries, and which is that five different fields. And the specimen exam paper shows some of the types of questions that can be set on this sort of material. Question four was three short parts that were all requiring students to be familiar with the data. Students who've worked with it, who know their way around it, those are, are very simple questions that are interpreting the, the data. Um, interesting, uh, who has more births? 
um, more like more births per year, UK or Ghana? Any guesses? Who would guess UK? Who would guess Ghana? Actually, within within a few thousands, they're the same. Um, they're both around eight hundred thousand babies a year, which is, I, you know, I, f I find that interesting anyway. Um, question five there was looking at the insights, sort of insights that using ICT, in this case a spreadsheet, can make available to you. It's essentially asking the question that if you spread the wealth as measured by income of the world around evenly, how much would everyone get? Um, which, again, is, a, is an interesting question. Um, I think it comes out at about $12,000. And then the third question, and there's a style of question there where if we've taken a, a sample from the complete set of pre-release data, and we've called it a pilot investigation because that's the sort of thing you would actually do if you were doing a pilot on the big data set. You would sort of look to see, I, I've got some idea, does this work out? And then having done, having looked at it, investigated it, you then might go back to looking at the complete set of, set of data there. And so that's, it's a, it, that one, it's actually using a, um, it's using a Spearman test um, on a sample of the data there. So you know, there will no doubt emerge all sorts of other styles of questions, but those are some of the styles of questions that are available on the pre-release data. You're not going to question spot those, even though you might think, oh, they're going to ask something about, um, has this person, that it checks, has this person read, worked with the data? The particular questions that are there, nobody's going to guess what they will be. There's far too much data and far too many possibilities. Now, uh, moving on, um, the content for this is tied in with the aim of supporting investigational work. So the content is all laid out under four headings, and those are the four headings in the statistics cycle. It's problem solving, the data collection, data processing and presentation, and then reporting and interpretation. Those, the, so all the content is tied into the, that cycle of statistical activity. And um, a lot of the content is um, sort of um, about skills, but the things that are the more advanced content, well, the normal distribution is used as a model. It's not used as a hypothesis test. We don't do any um, test on, the, on a, the mean of a normal distribution. But we do, it is used as a model. Um, two other hypothesis tests, two hypothesis tests that are there are the Spearman's and the chi-squared. If you look across subjects, the three most commonly used hypothesis tests are Spearman's, chi-squared, and the Mann-Whitney test. Um, to have include, we could have included the Mann-Whitney, but it would have actually probably overloaded the syllabus, or in our judgment it would have done. And to have had one hypothesis test would be too few, because that would um, give the impression that there was one and only one to be had, and any question on a test had to be about that one. So we settled on two, and the, those two are, are widely used in different subjects. Um, the Spearman's, you, know, you use a rank correlation when you've got a small data set. If 
um, as would be the case in the question that I just showed you about really the um, association the, between birth rate and life expectancy, uh, the negative <laughs> correlation that's there. Um, you know, if you suspect something, then you would use your spreadsheet to work out a product moment correlation coefficient. And so we're expecting an interpretation of that, but we're not, uh, we're not asking people to, to work it out for themselves. We're not expecting all that, that long formula to be used. Um, in the same way, people will be bringing in a knowledge of a line of best fit drawn by I. We're not asking for a regression line. Um, that's, that's not within the syllabus, but the concept of a line of best fit is there, and of course it can be used as a model. Now, the assessment of this, you've got the complete specimen paper there. The questions will all be set in some sort of modeling or investigative context. And a typical question will end with a comment and not with a number. And that's really quite an important concept there, that the whole point of the exercise is to find out something you want to know and not find out some number which might be very appealing to a mathematician but it isn't to anyone who's not a mathematician to the people this syllabus is, is targeted on. And questions one, two and three which um, of the um, specimen material there um, they're all based on not the pre-release materials. Question one which is about modelling, and it's set in a context that is loosely about geography. Question three, which is set in a context of psychology, and it's using a chi-squared test, and it's, you've got a psychology student who has been using an opportunity sample provided by going around and talking to supporters of the Six Nations teams to get uh, different populations which isn't a very good way of selecting a sample um, but that's that's using a chi-squared test now how is this going to pan out in the classroom well some teachers are going to find that it's going to be a, involve a change of style I'm sure it, it will do because like we've been saying in other things an awful lot of this is starting with problems and then determining what statistics we want to bring to bear to look at those problems. There are some differences in practice that I hope will take place. And the second bullet point is, is my aspiration, I think. Um, typically, you're going to have students for taking quite a diversity of case, uh, subjects. Uh, you'll if your school or college offers sociology, you'll have some sociology students, you'll have psychologists, you'll have geographers, and, and so on. And you've got people who are going to be bringing in information that is coming out of their subject areas. And that's something that should be seen, a good, a good teacher will see that as a huge asset, that all this experience is there to be shared with everybody else and for discussion. And so, you know, you'll have things like the a sociology may talk about a snowball sample. Now, no one else will have heard of a snowball sample. And so you'll get to talk about it. A snowball sample is actually when you want to get to a very hard to reach population, like, say, drug addicts. And you find one drug addict and you ask him, ask that drug addict what you wanted to ask. But then you ask the drug addict to put you in touch with one or two more drug addicts, and they know th who they are. And then you do that, and you repeat it, and you repeat it, and so you're snowballing. And that's, it's a sociology method of getting to hard to reach populations. And that's not in the syllabus, but it's within the philosophy of 
this sort of course uh, um, of actually discussing how you go about doing things. Um, a point that's already been made, it won't always be mathematicians who are delivering this course. I was talking about it last week to OCR's geography forum and the, at the end of it, the person sitting next to me said, you know, I really hope I can teach this. This was a head of geography who was really excited by the thought of doing it. But there's going to be a need for CPD. You won't be able just to give the spec and the, to any old teacher and expect it to work. You're, there's going to have to be some CPD and some ongoing involvement. And I should have said something about resources, but I forgot to on that slide. But Stella has told you about resources coming. Um, now, I'd like to make and to end with an optimistic prediction. Um, I really think that students who take this course are going to do better in their subjects particularly the, you know, the, the, the geographers, the psychologists and so on, they're going to have a background that is going to allow them to engage much better with the statistical work that's there. And before lunch, someone was talking about convincing senior management. I would like to predict that your psychologist who does this quite outside psychology will nonetheless end up with a better grade because they will be so much better able to engage with their, with their own subject. And getting good grades is, is fine, but to me the most important thing, I think, is that they'll be better equipped to go on for the rest of their lives. Um, I talked a lot about the requirements of AG, but it's similarly for employment and so on. I think you've got students who will have learned something that they have, aren't learning at the moment. And that's that.